Hey everyone, this is Dave coming at you again from the Dark Waters Fly Shop. Today I'll be tying one of my old personal favorites. This is one fly that every every old timer from the UP loves and talks about, um, and it is the Royal Coachman Streamer. This is a pattern that I have used extensively for the brook trout in the area. It's one, of, like I said, one of my all-time favorites. But I like to modify it a little bit with some some modern new materials and techniques. Um, I use some UV glue, some eyes, a little bit of fuchsia, floral fiber. Um, if you know me at all and have seen my flies, I use a lot of fuchsia um, materials. Seth kind of teases me about that, but it just works. So um, purple and fuchsia are my, are my go-to colors for the brook trout in this area. Um, I fish this, it's it's an unweighted fly other than a little bit of wire for the rib. Um, so it is very light, it stays pretty close to the top of the surface. Um, this this pattern, I like to do a, a twitching, hand hand twisting retrieve, sometimes small strips, but it, it like I said, it just works and I will, uh, with that I'll kind of show you guys what to do. For this fly, I will be using a TMC, Timco 300. This is a 6X long heavy shank streamer hook um, and GSP thread. This is 50 denier, so it's pretty pretty small stuff, but, but very strong. So with that, I'll start my, my thread on the hook shank working my way backwards snip off the tail so to start out with I'll take up my H2O floral fiber and pick off a small a small clump here this gives the fly a little bit of a hot spot it's bright very bright and it is UV treated so seems like it uh, shows up really well in the water. I typically tie in the, the, the clump in the middle, tie, tie a few wraps of thread, fold it back, and tie it in. Okay, take that, cut it off pretty short. Nice little clump there. And this fly also has a reinforcing wire. This is, this is just ultra wire, brassy sized uh, chartreuse color. So I will also tie the, that in at this time. So bring that in towards the, towards the back of the hook again. This later on will be wrapped forward to lock in all the peacock and everything that you're gonna use wrap that away out of my way for the time being and then select some peacock pearl this is I like to use a nice little clump here probably let's find a good good chunk here Take that and tie it in by the tips. Get the tips all nice and even. Bring your thread back. Lock it in place and just wrap it right back to the to the rear of the hook. Like snip off my my tips there. Okay. And then typically what I do is I'll take my clump of peacock and twist it together, which just basically gives it a little bit of strength and ensures that it doesn't come apart. Okay. Wrap that forward. Make a nice little fuzzy body on there. I 
gonna just tie that off and about there. Lock that in nice and good. And snip. Okay. At this point, I'm gonna typically with a with the traditional Royal Coachman pattern, you'd be using red red floss for this section. Um, I will be using this is Orvis brand, but it's just fuchsia um, holographic tinsel. Kind of a little new school twist on a, on a traditional pattern. Tie that in. Very close to the middle of the shank. Kind of, what I'm doing now is just wrapping, wrapping the body up a little bit here just to get a nice even thread base for that um, tinsel to, to go on. Okay. Now once I have, have the body um, fairly smooth and, and even now I'll go ahead and uh, start wrapping that, that tinsel forward. A lot of times what I'll do is take a little bit of, of glue at this point and just dab that on there. And that just kind of helps prevent prevent it from unraveling or anything like that too. That's sort of the point of the wire, but this just little redundancy. Take and wrap wrap my tinsel forward, and then once I have it to about where I'm satisfied with it then I'll actually go backwards just making sure that I didn't miss miss any spots or any gaps or anything like that and then forward so you want to give yourself plenty of material so you don't end up running out right towards the end and that's never never fun forward to, to get it right about where you want it. This is a, a pretty long shank hook, like I said, a 6x shank hook, so it is it is a longer one. Typically streamer hooks are, are usually about 4x long. This is a 6, so it's definitely a little longer than your standard, but, but I really like these long shank hooks for these hair wing and traditional style patterns. It just gives them a nice, nice look to them when they're, when they're finished. At this point, I'll take myself another, another clump, about the same size as, as what I used in the rear half of the, of the, of the shank. Again, you want to tie that in by the tips. Be pretty careful to so you don't break any of it. Sometimes it can be a little bit fragile, but that's kind of the idea of using a, a clump of it as opposed to just as opposed to just one or two fibers. Okay. From there, once again, you are gonna to want to just twist this all together. Again, just just to add strength. It just acts as one single fiber when it's all twisted together. So that gives it a little bit a little bit stronger than it ordinarily would would be. As a note, sometimes I use synthetic um, material for the for the same purpose, um, but this one is I'm just using the natural peacock pearl. Tie that, tie that in, lock it in good. Okay, 
this point, go back to your, your wire that you had tied in right at the beginning. And you're going to want to wrap that forward. And this prevents the peacock from coming unraveled after it catches, you know, after you catch a couple fish, those little little teeth have a tendency to pull this stuff apart pretty quick. So this reinforcing wire just helps to, to you know, to prevent it from coming apart after after one or two fish. So it's just a durability thing, and and I like to use the chartreuse just because it gives a little little flash to it. Good. Just as a note too, I don't use my same, don't use my good scissors to cut my wire with. That's, you want to always have a, a second set of scissors, at least a second set to cut off wire and heavier materials. Lock that in good. At this point, I like to tie in a couple strands of UV crystal flash. Just tuck it underneath my thread again right in the middle a couple wraps and then fold it back and then wrap backwards again and just cut it off okay at this point I'm using, for the white, I have a two-tone um, hair wing, so another kind of modern modern twist on it is the use of faux bucktail. This stuff is very similar to the real thing, kind of a little bit crinkly even like natural bucktail, but it's all, the nice thing is, is it's all uniform, uniform length, all the tips are even, so no, you know, no having to stack it and all that extra steps, so. A nice, nice product to use sometimes. The idea is to not use so much that it it takes away from the the ability for it to move in the water. So you want to kind of have just a, a little bit of a smaller clump. You know, you can kind of pick away at it before you tie it in. Get it to right about where you. Yeah, still a little too much. Okay. okay. I like I like to tie that so it's about even with the bend of the hook, and then the next color I, I go a little bit longer with. But this is why a big part of why I'm using GSP thread here because this takes some a little bit of tension to hold this in place. You really want to lock that in good pinch it between my fingers so it, it stays stays put for the time being and then wrap it wrap it back and you can kind of kind of maneuver it a little bit as you go and I like to when I when I snip this off I like to taper it just a little bit so it so it uh, is easier to, to tie my my head is if you cut it off perfectly straight it makes a little bit of a, a little bit of a step there and it makes it a little more difficult to tie in um, your finished finished head there so it's just just something that makes makes it finishing it off a little bit easier and then I use again fuchsia bucktail this um, this you can either you can use your an actual Tackle stacker or or hair stacker, I should say. Um, or you know, for the sake of expediency, I'm just gonna do it by hand. Hand stacking, it's called. So you take out any long stragglers and then hold it by the tip. You pull off any any short ones. Just a nice little little clump of that. Kind of measure it out against the white that you already have there, and as I said before, I like to tie it in just a little bit longer than than the white uh, full bucktail. 
I start with a couple of loose wraps just to just to position it where I want it and then I subsequently tie it in a little bit tighter each time until I'm pretty satisfied that I have it right about where I want it there Oops. excuse me and then again a nice tapered tapered cut to that so it looks pretty good again a little bit more glue this just really locks everything in nicely and otherwise it has a tendency to fall out after after some casting and catching a few fish you know it can and then once it starts falling out it's it's a bit of a chain reaction they just keep it keeps coming until you have a fly without any without any hair on it so that's it's never a good thing okay fair amount on there at this point going back to peacock sword a clump of this and here I'm going to flip this upside down in the vise measure it off against the hook pinch it in and a light wrap just to position it and then lock it in flip it back over Smooth everything out with some more wraps of thread. Give it all Make a nice even, even head on there. One other little modern addition is the use of 3D eyes that I've, I've used on, on the sample there. So the trick to that is just to have a nice, nice even head here going so it makes it a little easier to position those eyes. Once I have a pretty good head built up, I'll just go ahead and whip finish. And snip that off. Okay, from here, you're going to want to get your UV glue out. This, uh, this particular one is... Uh, Deer Creek tack free UV glue. This, um, I've been using this one for a while now and that's kind of kind of one that I I like. I've used several brands and this is kind of one that seems to work out pretty good for me. I definitely like that it's tack free so it doesn't really really require an application of a, of a head cement over the top of it. Take my take my eyes here. Start the button on me. Okay, go ahead. Position that eye where I want it. Maybe. And then flip it over and do the other side the same way. And you know, I'll just have a nice little blob of UV glue on the on the side of it, side of the head there. Just enough to get it uh, get it stuck in place for the time being. And then you have it where you want it. You can kind of go around. Make sure it's cured enough to, to stay in place. And then you're going to have a little bit of a gap in between the eyes at that point. So what you'll do is take some more of your UV glue and just fill in between that gap.
And you're going to want to do that to the top and to the bottom. When you use a thicker amount of UV glue, you tend to want to hold the light on there just a little bit longer than, than you ordinarily would. The great part about UV glue is you just have all the... As long as you're not tying your fly out in the sunlight, you have all the time in the world to work with it and it's not going to harden on you until you hit the light on it. that point that's uh, that is a finished fly so this is my UP Uper Royal Coachman streamer um, one of my favorite all-time brook trout patterns um, has just seems to work well um, pretty much all year round it's you know it, it uh, brook trout especially love it I've caught some browns on it but but in particular the brookies really really seem to love this color combination. Um, it's a long, long time favorite of a lot of the residents and old timer fly fishermen around here. Uh, you know, and it, it's one of those patterns that's kind of quickly giving way to some of the more trendier, more, more modern patterns, but it still works just as well as it ever did. And it's fun to, fun to modify. Um, so at that, This is, uh, yeah, so this is one of my favorite flies. Anyways, my name is Dave. Um, if you like more of the trout tying, fly tying videos, feel free to drop a comment in the section below. And thank you very much.